Good evening. Two things before we begin our worship this evening. First of all, you should have received a little yellow handout um, on the needs for Afghan refugees. The, um, the, the expectation is that between 15 and 17,000 refugees will be passing through Fort McCoy in the next uh, weeks. And so um, it's important that we respond to that. Um, Chris Seeger, our, um, our secretary, her daughter, is working as a volunteer through Mayo out at Fort McCoy. And uh, Janice said last week she was working with a seven-year-old, a seven-year-old whose mother has died and whose sister is not here yet. And so the seven-year-old is all alone. Um, there are people, whether we, um, you know, regardless of where we are on, on spectrums of any kind, these are real people who are really hurting. And so uh, they have needs. The yellow sheet which you were given, and for those of you who are watching on YouTube, you can download that same sheet off of our website, uh, homepage of our website, or the video page. Simply shares some of the kinds of needs that are out there and ways that we can respond. The La Crosse Area Synod is encouraging us to work through organizations that are there on the ground. That includes organizations like the Red Cross and Catholic Charities, or to take a look at the, um, the list of needs that uh, Peace Lutheran Church in Toma has, has assembled in consultation with Lutheran um, Social Services. So kind of take a look at that and see where you might fit in. I understand too that if you go to the Catholic Charities website, uh, you can also volunteer to work there, although they're looking for people who are gonna do more than volunteer for an hour or two. They're looking for a little bit more consistent volunteering at this point. But um, take a look at that and see where you might be able to be a part of God's work uh, in the lives of some people whose, whose lives have been totally ripped up and disrupted. So we share that with you in that invitation, that opportunity to do God's work with your hands. As we, um, as we also begin, get ready to begin our worship, we have two prayer concerns that we want to lift up. The first is uh, Judy and Phil Gilbert on the death of Judy's father this past week. So please keep them in your prayers as they grieve the loss of death. And then also Eleanor Lee, Eleanor uh, is resident over at um, Salem Terrace. Eleanor fell and broke her ankle. Uh, so she had ankle surgery yesterday, is that correct? Yesterday, Thursday, I'm sorry, Thursday, and will probably be in some kind of rehab for a period of time uh, to regain her strength and uh, mobility. So please keep Eleanor in your prayers as well. We begin our worship with Psalm 146. The words are in your bulletin. We invite you to pull the words out and to meditate upon them as Linda shares uh, music by which to meditate. Linda. Mm -hmm. As you are comfortable, would you please rise and would you join me in confession and forgiveness? Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose teaching is life, whose presence is sure, whose love is endless. Amen. Let us confess our sins to the one who welcomes us with an open heart. God, our comforter, 
like lost sheep we have gone astray. We gaze upon abundance and see scarcity. We turn our faces away from injustice and oppression. We exploit the earth with our apathy and greed. Free us from our sin, gracious God. Listen when we call out to you for help. Lead us by your love to love our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. By the gift of grace in Jesus Christ, God makes you righteous. Receive with glad hearts the forgiveness of all your sins. Amen. Gracious God, throughout the ages you transformed sickness into health and death into life. Open us to the power of your presence and make us a people ready to proclaim your promises to the whole world. Through Jesus Christ, our healer and Lord. Amen. The Gospel of our Lord. Jesus set out and went away to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there. Yet he could not escape notice. But a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him, and she came and bowed down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile of Syrophoenician origin. She begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, Let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, Sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he said to her, For saying that, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. So she went home, found the child lying on the bed, and the demon was gone. Then he returned from the region of Tyre and went by way of Sidon towards the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. They brought to him a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech, and they begged him to lay, him, lay his hand on him. He took him aside in private, away from the crowd, and put his fingers into his ears, and he spat and touched his tongue. Then looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. And immediately his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered them to tell no one. But the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were astounded beyond measure, saying, He has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. In a few minutes, we will be singing Healer of our every ill, light of each tomorrow. Give us peace beyond our fear and hope beyond our sorrow. Maybe it's the mood I'm in or the world in which we live. But right now, there are all sorts of ills surrounding us. I'm not just talking about the normal, common ills, like a cold or the flu, or broken bones, or surgery, or allergies, or a broken fingernail. I'm talking ills that are much bigger. Hurricanes that have devastated not only the South, but also the Northeast. Wildfires that are destroying thousands of miles of forest land and homes out West. Tens of thousands of refugees fleeing their homeland, believing being in a foreign place and learning a new way of life is better than waking up and fearing for their very lives every day. Being confronted by all of the isms and politics that create divisions among us, navigating a worldwide pandemic that seems to hang on, despite known safe practices and medical miracles that are gifted to us and we choose to ignore. And then there are the simple ills, like apathy, self-centeredness, laziness, missed opportunities, reluctance, and the list goes on. 
light, peace, hope. I'm just not seeing it right now. Probably because I'm stuck in the darkness of today and fear and sorrow. You see, it's all about me. I'm the one stuck. I'm stuck on me. Our scripture today talks about people suffering, a child possessed by a demon, a man who was deaf and had a speech impediment, the ills of life back then. But these people did not look inside themselves to find healing. They sought out the healer. They sought out the one who heals. They sought out Jesus. Those who sought the healer were quite bold in their seeking. These were not your typical followers of Jesus. They were not Jews. Instead, they were Gentiles. They were the enemy. And yet, they knew of Jesus, and they knew he could heal them. And they were not timid in asking for his help. The Seraphonician woman, whose daughter was possessed by a demon, was bold and brazen. She was in Jesus' face and would not take no for an answer. She stood up to Jesus, and even when it appeared he was putting her off in a mean-spirited way, pretty much calling her a dog, someone of no worth, she would not be discouraged, saying even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the table. She wasn't asking for Jesus to provide a full course meal. She knew just a crumb was more than enough. Jesus' rejection made her even more determined. This Gentile woman had great faith, and that gave her strength. Her faith was such that she knew only Jesus could heal her daughter, and she wasn't leaving until she got what she came to get. Jesus knew her faith and healed her daughter. Again, Jesus was sought out by the crowd as he continued his journey, this time on behalf of the man who was deaf and had a speech impediment. The crowd begged Jesus to lay his hand on him and heal him. Jesus took him aside, put his fingers in his ears, spat and touched his tongue, and the man could hear and speak clearly. The crowd knew of Jesus' power. The crowd had faith that Jesus alone could heal them. What great faith these people had in Jesus. These outsiders who went to great lengths to find Jesus, who were persistent in their asking, who never gave up because they were confident they would be heard and healed. It was a different time back then. But what if I stepped outside of myself for a moment and used the examples of these Gentiles, this Seraphonician woman and her daughter, and the man who was deaf and unable to speak, and the crowd that brought him? What if I put my faith in Jesus like they did, rather than in myself? Because deep down, I know it's not about me. It's about the one who was born of flesh and died on the cross to give me life. What if I put my faith in the healer of our every ill? The one who is light for tomorrow. The one who is peace beyond our fears. The one who is hope beyond our sorrows. Jesus is the light in the darkness, the light no darkness can overcome. Jesus is the one who calms our fears and comforts us in our sorrows. Jesus provides hope, and he places that hope in our path. When we are afraid and things seem hopeless, Jesus is there. But can we see him? Or are we blind to his presence? Do our eyes need to be opened? In the midst of COVID, 
We see the miracles of Jesus in the scientists who created a vaccine, in the healthcare professionals who tirelessly work to treat us and walk with us, in our neighbors who care enough to wear their masks for our sake and for the sake of others, in the midst of fleeing their homeland and leaving everything behind, the Afghanistan refugees can see the presence of Jesus in those who risked their lives to bring them here, in those who will provide medical care, in those who are working to collect the necessities they will need to live in a new place, in those who will accompany them on this journey. In the midst of the wildfires, once the fires die down, we will see the hand of Jesus in the new life that will begin to grow from the ashes, resulting in a new forest. In the midst of grieving the loss of that which is routine, that which is familiar and comfortable, that which we desperately want to reclaim, we see Jesus in those whose creativity and ingenuity allows them to find new ways to do things, and then in those who are open to doing things in new ways. In the midst of our fears of the unknown, what will school be like this year? What is the doctor or dentist going to tell me when I go to my appointment? What is going to happen to the ministries of this congregation this year? Confirmation, Sunday school, welcoming others. Like I said, maybe it's the mood I'm in right now that causes these to come to my mind. We see Jesus in the teachers and school staff, in the health care providers, in those who volunteer their time and talents. In the midst of our despair, our frustration, our discouragement, our loneliness, we see Jesus in those who step up to help, in those who are there to provide comfort and support, in those who are willing to do what needs to be done. In the midst of our darkness, fear, and sorrow, there is hope when minds and hearts are open, and we see Jesus through the Holy Spirit who is at work within us. The Holy Spirit nudges us to go beyond ourselves and to have faith that God is with us wherever we are, whatever we are doing. I may be stuck in the ills of life, but it is Jesus who provides the healing, the peace, and the hope. We put our faith in the healer of every ill, in Jesus Christ. We know the light of each tomorrow. We know the peace beyond our fears, and we know the hope beyond our sorrows. Amen. Let's sing. As you are comfortable, would you please rise? Oh. 
Would you please join me in our profession of faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. May children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Holy One, you bring us together in worship. Enliven your church that as we worship, we may be fed and nourished, then sent forth to share your love through word and deed. Lord, in your mercy, Hear you provide water for thirsty ground and sunshine to feed hungry plants. Bless the work to protect water and land that is healthy and restore that which has been polluted. Inspire all people to show care for the world you have made. Lord, in your mercy, Hear you show no partiality. Increase justice in all nations. Encourage leaders and governments to work with one another for the good of our common world. Unite us in seeking the health, safety, and dignity of all. Lord, in your mercy. You accompany those who are most in need. Shelter all fleeing violence or persecution Protect any who are in danger and sustain them through uncertain and unstable times. Especially with the refugees in our midst, that we may embrace them as your children and find ways to support and care for them. Lord, in your mercy, you support the work of your disciples. Continue to nurture the leadership and ministries of this congregation. Guide us that even in these uncertain times, we may be faithful to your calling. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You hold in your tender care all who are hurting, grieving, in sorrow or in pain. We pray this day for Phil and Judy as they grieve the loss of her father. And we pray that you comfort and hold them in this time of sorrow. We also pray for Eleanor. We pray that you bring her healing and wholeness. 
that she may be able to return soon to the life that you have given to her and continue as a faithful disciple in all that she does. Lord, in your mercy, you embrace all who have died in the faith and brought them into your glorious presence. We thank you for their example and rejoice in their lives. Lord, in your mercy, receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Would you please join me in the prayer our Lord taught us to pray? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All who hunger and thirst come, the table is ready. You may be seated. Would you please rise and would you pray with me? Lord of life, in the gift of your body and blood, you turn the crumbs of our faith into a feast of salvation. Send us forth into the world with shouts of joy, bearing witness to the abundance of your love in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. We continue in the singing of, O oh Christ, your heart's compassion. Thank you. 
are Christ's body, bringing new life to a suffering world. The Holy Trinity, one God, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. The living word dwells in you. Amen. Amen.